everyone. Today's video is going to be about the lithium iron phosphate battery I'm going to be using in the hybrid supercapacitor car starter battery. So I was originally going to have a sponsorship from one company, but I kind of lost contact with them. I've tried contacting them and I guess it's just over. It never happened. So whatever. I ended up ordering uh, another popular brand. Uh, it's called Dakota Lithium and I've already mounted it. Um, in the case for it and it is a 12 volt 10 amp hour battery so by the way this is a nice case works out fairly well so I've mounted the uh, battery the load resistor and the controller for it so far so we're going to go down to the bench and I'm just going to do a quick test on this battery basically a capacity test see if it actually does run 10 amp hours do, do we actually get that amount of power out of it or is the snake oil so here's the battery itself, red top, blue bottom, 12 volt, 10 amp hours, 120 watt hours. Um, just a little label right there. Nothing on the back, nothing on the side, nothing on the bottom. And the top, they also put the same printing again on there with uh, regular T2 connectors. So let's uh, see the sides of it first. Try not to short it out. Six inches. by eh, three and three quarters roughly by dun, 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 two and a half so yeah it's a small battery I mean I can put it in my hand and it's about the size of my hand itself so what does this thing actually weigh Let's see here on tear zero why my own ounces there we go 2.9 pounds. That's all it weighs. I believe the um, regular lead acid version of a 12 volt 10 amp hour battery is about 7 or 8 pounds. So yeah, this is uh, a lot lighter. It still has some weight to it. It's 2.9 pounds, but it's significantly lighter. So so I've charged this up now to uh, what Dakota Lithium says. They recommend only charging up to 14 volts, which is the equivalency of about 3.5 volts per cell, which is great it's like about a 92 or 95 percent charge or so you can take the uh, lithium iron phosphate cells up to 3.65 volts but uh, lithium iron phosphate kind of likes being a little less than 100 percent you get more life out of it and it's just happier there so we charge it up to the recommendation of 14 volts I initially put 5 amps into it and then did a constant voltage until we came down to 500 milliamps on this battery at that point it's basically charged so I let it sit for about an hour now um, see what the resting voltage is uh, we're about 13.4 and the original was like 14.2 to get a full charge up so that's this resting voltage roughly it's about 13.3 to 13.4 it might go down just a little bit more if I let it sit for another hour or two but I want to do a load test on this, and I really want to get it done today instead of waiting another 24 hours. So let me go get the uh, load test set up, and we'll get that started. Okay, so we're running at 13.4 volts right now. We're going to change that, definitely. Uh, let's get up here. There we go. Um... We're going to stop at 11 volts, which is what the recommended low charging is. It's 11 volts, and let's see here. Let's discharge at 3 amps. So let's go ahead and run that. You can see the initial voltage drop real quick. And then we're going to count up amp hours and watt hours and see how much power we really get. So at 3 three amps pull this should take roughly three six nine just over three hours for it to really drain so let me let this run and we'll get the final figures okay so the testing is now done she's blinking like crazy so let's uh get to stop blinking and amp hours 9.781 amp hours not bad watt hours 124.5 out of scroll over there a little bit 120 watt hours not bad at all. That's great, especially for a brand new battery. 12.73. I forget what the heck that actually stands for. But, yeah, 9.781 and 124.5. So, yeah, this is good for its rated capacity, definitely. 
So there you go. I took the battery out of the case. Actually, I did that before I even put it in this case type of deal. So it actually tested out at 10 amp hours. Now, don't forget also at the same time, with these units, actually it was 9 point, what, 9.75 or 9 and 3 quarters amp hours. These are like $25 each on eBay. They give you a great ballpark figure of capacity. It's not a $10,000 precision unit. But it lets us know that, yes, this battery is actually rated for 10 amp hours. Now, here's another kicker for you, too. Versus the lithium iron phosphate, if you take a 12 volt, 10 amp hour lead acid battery, number one, of course, is going to be a lot heavier. This only weighs three pounds, actually just under. Um, the 10 amp hour of that is going to weigh like eight or nine pounds because the lead is so much heavier in it. But even more to the point, if it's 10 amp hours rated, that's only if you discharge that battery to 100%. The lithium iron phosphate battery, it doesn't care. It doesn't care if you go to 100%, it can handle it. It's made for it. Lead acid, on the other hand, if you take it below 50% of depth of discharge, which would be, in this case, 5 amp hours, you start damaging the battery and shortening the life of the battery. So, yeah, you could probably get 10 amp hours if you're lucky out of a 10 amp hour rated lead acid battery, but you're only going to get maybe, instead of like three to 500 charge cycles on average for a lead acid, you'll be lucky you get 100. Whereas with this, it's designed to do that. It will give you 2,000 cycles. Well, we'll find out in 10 years after I really run it through in 10 years. But these are rated for 2,000 charge cycles. And that's 80% depth of discharge, I believe. I don't think it's 100, but it's like 80, which is 8 amp hours. It's perfect for what we're doing with the car. It's only meant to handle the parasitic loads. So, like I showed before in the beginning of the video, I had this mounted. It's not going anywhere. All it is is a uh, zip tie. Running right through the back and then zip tie to itself again. It's not going anywhere. So, it doesn't have to be a fancy mounting as long as it's safe inside the car. Get back in there. As long as it's safe back in the car, in case you flip the car or do whatever, you have to slam on the brakes. You don't want anything that has an electrical potential moving around. So it's secure in this case. The case will be secured in the car. And we have all this extra space for supercapacitors. Now, before I stop this video, there's probably going to be at least a two to three week gap. I'm waiting for Amperex. Believe it or not, I pronounced it Amperex. I actually talked to Bala on the phone last week, at least for like five minutes type of deal. I finally got a hold of him. He's such a hard guy to get a hold of. But he's got more supercapacitors on its way on over from where they get manufactured. They, he said they should be in about the 10th of September, give or take a few days with shipping and everything. Hopefully I'll have the other 15 I need so I can finish up these three strings before the end of September because I'm moving early October. Finally done running at this place and we bought a townhouse so we're going to be moving so there's going to be probably a couple week gap for this project i'll see if i can post some other stuff unrelated to this whole thing in the meantime as soon as i get those in all we have to do is build these three real quick which i'll do that off camera you already know how to build them from watching these two um we need to run really heavy copper bus bar this was a test which i'll get into more detail when we get to that point so once we, next video will be assembling the whole array and then we're going to go into the actual testing. But there will be a few week delay while I wait for the stock to build back in. It's driving me nuts. I want to get this project done. So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Please thumbs up wherever heck it is down here because it really helps me. And thanks for watching.